vaping macro, unit six, the open economy, international trade and finance. This is subunit 6.1, the balance of payment. Guys, there it is, the balance of payments. Guys, when you look at it, if you're like me, a little intimidating. Please don't be intimidated. Also, you might think, boy, I got a lot to memorize. Please understand, you can own it. You don't have to memorize it, okay? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch this video two times. If you watch this video two times, I really think you will own this thing. But again, you gotta watch it twice. Let's get to it, guys. What the heck is the balance of payments? The balance of payments is where we record every international transaction. If money is going out of a country or into a country, it gets recorded in that country's balance of payments. And that's right, guys. Every country has a balance of payments. So for the rest of this video, let's just assume this is the U.S. balance of payments because every country has a balance of payments and the international transactions get recorded here. Not just domestic ones, okay? Not domestic ones. If I go to McDonald's down the corner, right, and I get a milkshake, that doesn't go here. But if Ford Motor Company sells a car abroad, that gets recorded in this balance of payments. Only international transactions. Now, when we record these international transactions, we want to categorize them, right? And basically we do it this way. We say there are two major accounts that we're going to put these transactions into. One of them is the current account, which guys represents current income. That's right. A country receiving current income or providing others current income. Or the other one, the financial account. This is where we record investments, okay? Investments by a country when they want to invest abroad or when the rest of the world wants to invest inside of that country. And by the way, I just want to hit this, make sure this is very clear. For all of these, where I got my A, B, C, and my A, and my B right there, guys, money is flowing both ways. We've got transactions where money's flowing out and transactions where money's flowing in. Keep that in mind as we keep going. Now, here's the thing. There are some textbooks and international bodies who make this a little bit more complex than this. But guys, it doesn't, it's the, the things, the added complexity that you might see out there is really just a little bit of information at the margins. 99% of what you want to understand is right here. In fact, if you want to understand the Financial Times and the Wall Street Journal, guys, if you understand this, you totally understand enough to take in that type of information. And it's definitely, for a 101 macroeconomics course, this is definitely all you need to know are these two major accounts. So again, yes, there is a little bit more complexity out there you might run into in a different textbook or in some international bodies out there. But for the most part, guys, this is the way to approach a concept. Okay, let's keep going. Let's talk about the current account. Again, that's where we record current income. Now, you can see I've got an A, a B, and a C. I want to approach this kind of high level at first, okay? Once again, I want you to think of the current account as our current income, where we, we, where we record current income. And here's the thing. How does a country or people or entities or organizations in a country make current income? And here's the thing. If you think about it the way I'm about to tell you, it will be like, oh yeah, no duh. That's how people make income. Here's the number one way, right? A. Basically, provide a good or service abroad. That's right. Make a good or service and sell it abroad. You do that, you will get current income. That's right here. That gets recorded there. What's another way to make income? A past investment. Somebody or an entity or organization, something, went and bought stocks and bonds abroad. If they bought bonds, they're getting interest payments. If they bought stocks, they get dividends or profit distribution. That's what a dividend is. It's a profit distribution to shareholders who bought stock in the past. Okay. So again, how do you make current income? Make a good or service, sell it abroad. That's A. Past investment. That's what B is mainly about. Okay. Some past investment is made, and now you're making the interest, or you're making the dividend payment. Or C, somebody just gives you money. Or you provide somebody else with money. It's just a simple transfer of money. Okay. Hey, your aunt sends you money on your birthday. That's right there. That's a way to make money. Now, of course, to be reported in this thing, that aunt would have to live abroad. But guys, what I want you to understand is if you want to own A, B, and C, I want you to say, look, it's common sense. There's three ways to basically make income, right? Think about your parents. You know, I can definitely just take my own personal life. How do I make income? Guys, number one, I provide a service. That's I teach, right? That's my A. That's how I get a lot of my income. B, yes, I bought stocks and bonds in the past. I get interest and I get dividend payments. That is how I also make income. And then finally, yes, occasionally a relative from abroad sends me money. Or I might provide some relative, um, uh, 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 some, some money myself, okay? So 
That is the way that we make current income. That's how countries do it. That's how people do it. Those are the three accounts. Let's go into them in a little bit more detail. Again, A, it's got an asterisk. It's the most important sub-account of the current account. The sales and purchases of goods and services. Here's the thing, guys. This is net exports. That's what A is all about, guys. If we sell an export, the United States sells an export, money comes in, that's current income to us. If we go buy an import, money's going out, we're providing current income to somebody else. That's what A is all about. Don't think there's a lot to be memorized. This little arrow right here is just to say, hey, some textbooks don't call it sales and purchases of goods and services. I think that's perfectly fine, very understandable. They just call it the balance on goods and services. That's fine, it's just another name. So if you come across balance on goods and services, that's the same sales and purchases of goods and services. And like I said, all of this is just net exports. That's what's getting recorded here, okay? The number one way that a country makes income is providing a good or service, right? Or providing income to others is to buy a good or service. B, let's talk about factor income, then we'll get to the net investment income, which is the main thing we're going to focus on, the factor income. Let's talk about it this way, guys. What's a factor of production? It's a resource, right? And how many factors of production are there? There's four, right? What are there? Land, labor, capital, entrepreneur, and ability. We know land gets paid rent, right? Labor gets paid wages, capital gets paid interest, entrepreneurs get paid profits, right? There's four factors of production and each one gets their own type of income. And any of those can get recorded here if that factor of production is operating abroad. Or if a factor of production from abroad comes and operates in the United States, that income paid to them would get recorded here. Remember, we're seeing money flowing both ways in all of these sub-accounts, right? Money's flowing both ways in all of these sub-accounts. So that's the factor income. Let's think about it this way. You go buy a rental property abroad, okay, the rent, that gets recorded here. Or maybe you're a computer scientist and you go work temporarily abroad, the wages get recorded here. But here's the big thing, okay? The main things we focus on for B is really net investment income. Yes, I want you to know rents do get recorded here in B. Wages can get recorded in B. But the big thing is net investment income. It's the interest and the profits, okay? The main thing that we see here is when a, co a company or an individual has gone and invested abroad. An individual might have bought stocks and bonds. The bonds pay interest. The stocks pay a dividend, which is profits. There's the interest. There's the dividends, which is profits. So interest and profits. You see that income being recorded here. Or again, somebody from abroad came and bought stocks and bonds from a company in our country, and now we're paying them interest or dividends. Or a multinational corporation went and opened up an operation in our country. And so, guys, when they went and opened up an operation in our country, now the operation is going, and now that operation is actually generating income, and that income is flowing back to them. Or a multinational corporation in our country went and started an operation in the past abroad, and now that income, now that the operation is actually going and working, that income flowing in, that gets recorded here. The big thing I want you to focus on for B is interest and profits. That's the big thing. Net investment income is what some textbooks call it, and that makes it nice and simple. Okay, that's right. Another way to get income is from past investments, right? This is not the investment. This is not the buying of the stock or bond. This is the income that comes from that past investment. And then finally, net transfers. Guys, this happens between private individuals all the time, right? You've got parts of the family broken up across countries, and so they remit money back and forth to each other. Guys, that gets recorded here. That's a private transfer. And also foreign aid. When a government from one, one government sends money to another government, guys, that's a public transfer. So our public and private transfers get recorded here also. That's it. Three major accounts. What are they again? Guys, there's a balance on goods and services, otherwise known as sales and purchase of goods and services, i.e. net exports. Just when we sell goods and services, that is A. B, past investments, now we're getting the interest and the dividends payment. C, just a simple transfer of money. All of that is either representing current income coming in or us providing current income to others. Moving on, financial account. This is mainly about investments, okay? This is the buying of the stock or bond. Remember, this guy, that B again, that was the payment of the interest or the dividend that comes later on, okay, based on the fact that stock and bond being bought in the past. This is the buying of the stock or bond, okay? So sales and purchases of private assets, stocks and bonds. Now, here's the thing. Truly, truly, you can break A down into net foreign portfolio investment and net foreign direct investment. 
That's more portfolio investment, guys. That's what I've been saying the whole time. That really is the buying of the soccer bond. That's when I go and buy stocks and bonds from companies that operate abroad, right? Ah, that's right. Go and buy stocks and bonds from companies operating abroad. That is that net foreign portfolio investment. But also, you've got that foreign direct investment. That's that multinational corporation. That's when that U.S. multinational corporation goes and starts creating the operation abroad, right? They're building out the facility. Not earning income yet, guys. When they earn income, once that thing is operating, that operation actually starts to operate and gets income, that would be recorded up here. But guys, this net foreign direct investment is, hey, let's go break ground and start building up that manufacturing facility abroad. That actual investment is happening here. Remember, the buying of the stock or bond, the actual building out the operation abroad, that is being recorded in the financial account. The income from those past investments, when that income does come in, that will be recorded here. Next, B, right here. Sales and purchases of official assets. What the heck are official assets, guys? They're official reserve assets. Well, that might not have done anything for you. They're reserve currencies. You see, guys, there are certain reserve currencies. Currencies that we use to settle international transactions. What are the big five, guys? They're the dollar, they're the pound, they're the euro, I probably should go dollar, pound, sorry, dollar, euro, pound, yen, and then UN as far as order of importance. That's about the order of importance. Let me do it one more time. Dollar, euro, pound, yen, UN. Those are our reserve currencies. And central banks buy and sell those reserve currencies. That's right, central banks. When central banks purchase or sell, sell one of those types of currencies, those reserve currencies, I gave you five, guys, that gets recorded here. So, when central banks do sales and purchases of these official assets, right, these official reserve assets, guys, that's recorded here in B. It's usually to basically affect the exchange rate, okay? Many countries have what's called a managed float. We'll get in that later, later on in this unit, okay? And they want to just manage their exchange rate a little bit. And when they do that, guys, they're going to buy and sell these currencies to affect their country's currency's exchange rate, all right? So that's what's going to go here. Of course, we'll do more with that in other videos, all right? So that's it. That's the big picture. Got the current account where we have current income. Hopefully you've got it. Hey, goods and services, past investments, or somebody just giving you money, just transferring money. And then this one right here could be where we're doing this net foreign portfolio investment. That's the stocks and bonds, or a multinational corporation is doing some type of investment. And yes, central bank activity, buying and selling these reserve currencies of the world, that gets recorded here. Those are the major things that are being recorded in the balance of payment. But before we go, guys, I want you to take a look at this right here. T0 transactions. A lot of transactions are T0 transactions. They're one and done. Okay, they happen. The, the, the buyer and the seller are not tied together in any way. You know what these are? These T0, they are current account. In fact, which type of current account? Okay, so I'm gonna say these are current account. Which type of current accounts are T0, guys? Is A1? Absolutely. Alright, so I'm gonna put A, and then what else out of these? C. C, right there, you're one and done. You go send money to your aunt that lives abroad, guys, that's just a one and done transaction. Y'all aren't tied, she doesn't owe you anything, you don't have any obligation either, okay? So A and C are these T0 current account transactions. How about T0 that necessitate a T1, okay? You can even like secure a T1 transaction, okay? Necessitate or secure a T1. I'm talking about these T0s. What are these things? Are they this one or this one? And the answer is 100% financial account. That's right. These are financial account transactions. These things happen and they necessitate this future flow of income. I've already given you what T1 is. It's a future flow of income. So what is that T1? That is current account. Which current account is it, guys? It's B right there. It's that B right there. That's a way to kind of think about these types of things, okay? Once again, buy or sell a good or service, right there, one and done transaction, of course that's a current account, that's present income. Or receive income based on a past investment, guys, that's current account, that's B right there. Or, guys, you do the investment. An investment, that's a T0 transaction that necessitates 
a T1 transaction. Now, finally, before we end this video, which we are in just a second, I want you to remember for A, B, C, and A and B here, guys, money is flowing both ways, okay? Right? We've got an export, that's where money's coming in, or we're going to buy an import, money's flowing out. Right, factor income. We did a past investment abroad. Money's now income's now flowing in. Somebody else did a past investment in our country. Money's now flowing out. We got to go pay them that income, give them current income, or in that transfer. That word nets. <laughs> that definitely means money's going both ways. We can give remittances to somebody else. Somebody else can give remittances to us. Okay. And then again, the financial account, sales and purchases. Sales and purchases. We got money going both ways, guys. Credits and debits, that's right. If money is flowing in, that's a credit. You need to know that, guys. Money's flowing in, the term we're gonna use is credit, that's right. Any of these that has money coming in, it is a credit 100% of the time. If money is flowing out, that's a debit. That's right, money flows in, it's a credit, and money flows out, it's a debit, it's that simple, guys. What's an export? Is an export a credit or a debit, guys? An export, I'm selling a good or service, the money's coming in, that's a credit. Right? I go buy a stock and bond abroad. I go buy a stock and bond abroad. What's that to my country right now? The buying of the stock and bond. Well, the money's flowing out. That's right. It's a debt. That's a debt. Okay? So you need to be able to follow which way the money's flowing to understand the credit or the debit. I hope that makes sense to you guys. That is 6.1. Watch the video twice. I promise. It'll begin to make sense.